Hey, what's going on? My name's Robert, and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. This video is all about the 4L60E 1-2 shift valve and the 1-2 shift solenoid. A quick side note, the 1-2 shift solenoid is sometimes referred to as shift solenoid A. In 1996, OBD2 standards were implemented and shift solenoid A was renamed to the 1-2 shift solenoid. If your 4L60E happens to be missing a gear, you may be dealing with a problematic 1-2 shift valve and or a problematic 1-2 shift solenoid. But before we can dive into diagnosing problems, we must first have a solid understanding of the basics. In this video, you're gonna learn a number of things, including the oil path from the oil pan over to this particular valve train. Additionally, we'll be building a user-friendly oil schematic, making it super easy to understand what's going on. And last, but certainly not least, you'll gain an understanding of how this valve train works and why it works the way that it does. It's my goal and my hope that by the time you reach the end of this short video, that you will have a solid understanding of how the 1-2 shift valve and the 1-2 shift solenoid operate. Gaining this kind of knowledge will enable you to make informed rebuilding decisions, and it'll help you diagnose your 4L60E automatic transmission problems. If you're as excited about this video as I am, please do me a solid and take the time to hit that like button. It really helps the channel out a lot more than you know. Thank you for that. Without further ado, let's get the show on the road. As you already know, this video is all about the 1-2 shift valve and the 1-2 shift solenoid. In order for this valve train to function as intended, it must receive oil to this portion of the valve body. Looking at the valve body, it looks as though the oil has appeared out of nowhere, and that's definitely not the case. In this segment, we're gonna be covering how the oil flows from the oil pan all the way over to our valve train. The 4L60E oil pump is indirectly driven by the engine's crankshaft. So naturally, the pump rotates at engine speed. While the pump rotates, it simultaneously sucks fluid in and pushes fluid out. Oil residing in the oil pan is drawn through the filter and sucked into the pump. At this point, the oil goes from a low pressure oil to a high pressure oil known as line pressure. More on that a little bit later. The line pressure makes its way through a small passageway here and goes through a small screen. It rounds this corner here and comes into contact with the pressure regulator valve. The pressure regulator valve is responsible for regulating line pressure. The oil then makes its way down towards the bottom of the pump. The oil exits the pump here and enters the transmission case here. The oil goes down this passageway. The oil then jumps up through the separator plate and into this portion of the valve body. Makes its way across the valve body like so. And this time the oil jumps down through the separator plate and down into the transmission case travels a short distance where the oil jumps up through the separator plate and up into this portion of the valve body where the oil immediately comes into contact with the AFL valve. If you're interested in learning about the AFL valve, you can find a shortcut to that video in the video description down below. Once again, the oil comes into immediate contact with the AFL valve. The oil travels into the AFL valve circuit and uh, the oil changes color because the oil now becomes what is known as AFL pressure as opposed to line pressure. That AFL fluid flows through this portion of the AFL circuit. It goes through the separator plate and steps down into the transmission case. Travels down this channel where it jumps through the separator plate and back up into the valve body. It takes a short jog to the right, goes through the separator plate and back down into the transmission case where it travels a very short distance, yet again jumping through the separator plate, but this time going through a screen that's built right into the separator plate. It travels a short distance through this portion of the valve body, where the oil yet again goes through the separator plate and back down into the transmission case. The oil travels across this channel, and you guessed it, the oil's jumping through the separator plate. Lucky for us, it's the final trip through the separator plate. This time is different though, because the oil is going through an orifice and the AFL oil, which is yellow in color on paper, that AFL oil is now being converted over to signal oil, which is blue in color. 
after the oil goes through the separator plate, we finally reach our destination. The oil comes in contact with the one, two shift solenoid and the one, two shift valve. As you saw, the oil takes a lot of like twists and turns during its journey from the oil pan all the way over to our valve train. There is however, a much easier way to look at this. More on that in the next segment. Reading and understanding oil flow schematics can be quite difficult as they tend to be very complex. Typically, there's just way too much information going on all at once. So with that said, let's build a super simple oil schematic that focuses just on the oil circuit that we're working on right now. Oil living in the oil pan is drawn through the oil filter and sucked into the pump. It makes its way around the pump like so. Uh, at this point in time, the oil changes from a low pressure oil over to a high pressure oil known as line pressure. We'll circle back to line pressure in just a second. That oil makes its way through this passageway and goes around this corner and makes its way over to the pressure regulator valve. The PR valve is responsible for setting line pressure. The oil then makes its way down to the bottom of the pump and exits the pump right here. It then makes its way over to the AFL valve. So line pressure. Line pressure is king of the mountain as far as oil pressures go within the 4L60E. That oil pressure ranges anywhere from 55 PSI up over 300 PSI. The AFL valve takes that high line pressure and it regulates it down to a lower pressure known as AFL pressure. AFL pressure ranges anywhere from 55 PSI up to a maximum of 115 PSI. The oil leaves the AFL valve and makes its way over to the solenoid screen. It passes through that screen and then makes its way over to an orifice. An orifice is just a fancy word for a small hole and this small hole happens to live in the separator plate of the 4L60E. The oil enters that separator plate as AFL fluid. However, once it's squeezed through the orifice, the oil comes out the other side as signal oil pressure. And that uh, is this blue color, at least blue on paper. Signal oil pressure ranges anywhere from zero PSI up to, again, a maximum of 115 PSI. That signal oil pressure makes its way from the orifice over to the one, two shift solenoid and the one, two shift valve. Switching gears real quick. According to my analytics, not a lot of you are subscribed. So if you're watching this video and it's adding value, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell too. So you don't miss out on any future videos. Now that we understand how the oil makes its way into this portion of the valve body, let's dive into how this valve train actually works. Now that we've discovered how oil makes its way into this portion of the valve body, let's dive into how this valve train actually works. Oil fills this portion of the valve body. And in doing so, the oil comes into contact with the one, two shift valve and the one, two shift solenoid. The solenoid has two operating states. It can either be on or off. Let's begin with the solenoid in the off position. Oil enters this circuit and travels through this shift solenoid, past the valve within the shift solenoid, and the oil exhausts or exits the solenoid here, and that oil goes back to the oil pan. In this scenario, the oil comes into contact with both the one, two shift solenoid and the one, two shift valve. However, because the oil is being bled off through the one, two shift solenoid, we don't build up any oil pressure at the one, two shift valve. Now with the solenoid turned on, this closes the valve within the solenoid and we no longer bleed off oil pressure. Oil pressure starts building at the reaction end of the one, two shift valve. When the oil pressure builds up enough, the oil pressure pushes the shift valve in this direction. When the solenoid is turned off, the internal valve within the solenoid opens, allowing oil pressure to bleed off. As that oil pressure bleeds off, the spring at the other end of the valve pushes the valve back to this position. So in its most basic form, the shift solenoid, it either uh, traps oil, which builds oil pressure and pushes the uh, one, two shift valve in this direction, or that shift solenoid bleeds off oil pressure. So we don't have any oil pressure in that circuit. And then the spring winds and pushes the shift valve back to this position. In the case of the 4L60E in first gear, this shift solenoid is energized or turned on. 
And as we know now, that means that the internal valve within the solenoid is closed, trapping oil, which causes a buildup of oil pressure that strokes the valve up to this position. Uh, at this point in time, we haven't talked about what this actually does. So let's introduce line pressure. There's actually line pressure in this portion of the valve body. This pressure uh, is there to do a number of things, one of which the oil is trying to get past the valve and into this portion of the valve body. At this point in time, the valve is positioned in a way that it's preventing line pressure from entering this portion of the valve body. However, when we shift to second gear, the computer just commands this solenoid, it turns it off. And as we know, that bleeds off the oil pressure at the reaction end of the shift valve, and the shift valve is stroked to this position. With the valve in this position, line pressure now has the ability to enter this portion of the valve body. This portion of the valve body ultimately makes its way over to the 2-4 servo, which strokes the servo and applies the band and helps us create second gear. Now, if the 4L60E was in second gear and we wanted to go back down to first gear, the PCM would command the solenoid back on, which would uh, build oil pressure at this end of the valve, pushing the valve up to this position. And in this case, we're cutting off oil from entering this portion of the valve body. And at the same time, that uh, portion of the valve body that's uh, currently charged with uh, the oil that's feeding the 2-4 servo, that oil pressure is bled off elsewhere. So that circuit goes dead, which releases the band and puts us back in first gear. On the surface, you've learned how the one, two shift valve and the one, two shift solenoid operate. However, in my mind, it goes a lot deeper than that. Learning the basics that we've covered in this video puts you one step closer to fully understanding how the 4L60E transmission works as a whole. And when you're armed with that kind of knowledge, it'll enable you to make informed rebuilding decisions and it'll help you diagnose 4L60E transmission problems. Do you have questions about this specific video or even generic 4L60E questions? Drop me a line in the comment section down below. I'm happy to help. Speaking of helping, if it feels right to you, please consider helping me grow this YouTube channel. You can find more info on that in the video description down below. Thank you so much for listening. I will catch you next time. I won't stop till I hear him say. Oh, oh.